Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. We're back, this is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're here at EMC World. Prasad Rampali is here. He's the CEO of QLogic, good friend, CUBE alum. Prasad, it's really a <laughs> pleasure seeing you again. Same here, Dave, it's been a pleasure. It's been uh, a while since we chatted, so I'm really, really glad to be here. Yeah, well last time you were with EMC uh, right. in, in a quite a different role. Now CEO of uh, a smaller but pretty sizable public company. So give us the update. How's it going at QLogic? You enjoying yourself and uh, what's new? Well, you didn't ask me why I joined in the first place. No, so maybe next. you should start there, right? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you start there? Go ahead. Well, I was uh, really not looking for the role, uh, but uh, as and when it happened, uh, I, I dug into it. Obviously, I knew QLogic back even in my Intel days. Uh, sure. It's been a pioneer in IO technologies, and uh, uh, Intel acquired their InfiniBand business uh, many years ago. So. I have uh, a previous understanding of Keylogic and after joining uh, EMC, this was back in 2010, um, uh, Keylogic obviously is a very strategic partner to EMC and uh, I came to know them quite intimately. And so when the opportunity came about, uh, the fact that Keylogic was, uh, or is, a IO leader in the connectivity space, both on fiber channel and ethernet, um, you might be aware that they have 79 quarters of uh, profitability, uh, which is a pretty long marathon tenure of just <laughs> bringing in the cash. Uh, coupled with that, you know, I've never done a CEO gig before. This was my opportunity, and uh, when I combined the two things, it was a very compelling thing to just pass, so. Well, it's an interesting plus. market dynamic. I mean, yeah. for decades you've had this sort of, a decade plus, you've had this sort of duopoly, and fiber channel's very, very hard. People I don't think really understand <laughs> you know, the difficulty of a hardened fiber channel. Like, Stu, I know you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Dave, people think, oh, it, it's a piece of hardware card, right? Yeah. It's like, come on, people, like, we've been talking about this software-defined world and everything. I mean, the, the, the adapter card business has always been about software and the interoperability there. I mean, that's, you know, most of your engineers are software. <laughs> I mean, Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, I'm so glad you said that, Stu, because uh, there is a myth that we are a pure hardware company. But the reality is the core folks who actually do the ASIC IP blocks and the architecture are one third the engineering size. The two thirds of the engineering team is software and mm -hmm. firmware development. And a lot of that is in the context of operating systems, applications, and ensuring that as you plug in this adapter, this stuff, the storage area network just works, <laughs> right? And uh, that just works part is uh, got a lot of savvy on firmware, software, integration with OS driver stacks that just move on gen to gen to gen to gen. We are on the fifth generation moving to the sixth generation now and uh, enterprise uh, has an assumption that when you plug in this generation and go to the next generation on uh, a Grantly server, uh, I don't have to re-qualify from ground up, I just do some basic tests and it works. Well, and you're moving yeah. a lot of data around. Yeah. Um, if you lose any of that data, the world's <laughs> in big trouble. But So it's been interesting to see the last five or years or so you've got you know, everybody says Moore's Law is dead, but they keep figuring out ways to you know, <laughs> double every 18 months or less. You've got, you know, virtualization. You've got Flash now coming out with just incredible I.O. performance. How does that, you know, stress the system and how does QLogic respond to that? Oh, that's a straight man. That's a great question because, uh, I mean, this whole uh, event is all about a disruption in the data center uh, right. and the uh, emergence of uh, the third platform. But the underlying physics of the problem in terms of the creation or the um, uh, building of the next generation data center architecture is precisely around the displacements that are occurring that you mentioned, right? Uh, the key disruptors are number one, flash, from a storage standpoint. Uh, number two, uh, from a transport standpoint, is the move to 25, 50, 100 gigabit ethernet. Uh, number three, uh, fiber channel is actually having a renaissance with flash. Uh, because two, to your point, um, at the end of the day, people care about mission critical reliability, unquestioned latency, and performance, and uh, when you get down to it, when you actually look at running SAP, Oracle, and so on and so forth, people are not jumping to, oh yeah, I got that 40 gigabit ethernet, or the 100 gigabit ethernet, I'm going to go use that. It's good old fiber channel, right? So, uh, so you have this uh, significant disruption that's occurring, and the question is, as a, a data center guy, uh, 
how are you going to bring all this goodness together into the next generation architecture? And therein lies the opportunity for us because we think that I.O. is a very critical pillar for this emerging architecture and these adapter cards that you mentioned uh, have an opportunity to go through a metamorphosis uh, as uh, enabling the next level of I.O. intelligence besides just I.O. transport. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. that's what we're doing. All right. but so Prasad, you know, anybody that knows QLogic you know, knows about the I.O. piece, you know, it, it knows the important place that, that QLogic has played in the ecosystem. What's your vision for QLogic though going forward? There's been so many changes in the last couple of years. Uh, I, I think it was in the keynote this morning they said, you know, that the pace of change is only going to increase. So yeah. we, we know that's the stage. So in that ever-changing world, you know, what, what, what's QLogic's place? You know, where do you want to see the company going? Yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, still the, we want to be the preeminent IO solutions provider for enterprise and cloud. Yeah. Now that sounds simple in statement, but obviously it's pretty ambitious. Yeah. Uh, and we want to do it in uh, two phases over the next three, four years. Uh, phase one is uh, we want to absolutely be number one on rock solid foundation for IO connectivity, which is all the transports that happen for data from servers through switches uh, to target uh, storage environments. We want it to be on our uh, capability, on our systems. So, uh, you know, when, I, when I look at the enterprise, it, it's right. been the OEMs that have been a huge partner of yours, companies like EMC, like HP, uh, and, and others. When you talk about the cloud, can you talk about how QLogic plays there? Is it through some of those partnerships? Is, is it on your own working with some of the, the, the biggest guys in the world? You know, how does QLogic's cloud vision go? Yeah, so we have a two-pronged approach. Uh, you know, all clouds are not the same, as you know. So yeah. uh, when you look at the uh, managed service provider clouds, which are large multi-tenant infrastructure and capabilities, uh, the go-to-market is still through our tier one OEMs, uh, HP, Dell, IBM, and the like, and uh, we are working very closely with them uh, on enabling workloads, uh, much like what you've heard in this conference around scale out, uh, and uh, uh, enabling that with the right level of uh, performance and latency uh, with uh, our core technology. So uh, we are delivering next generation uh, servers uh, and uh, storage systems uh, on ethernet uh, that uniquely enable scale-out architectures. Uh, in the public cloud space, uh, we are working directly with a target set of uh, end customers, in this case, service providers, uh, who are establishing, hey, this is what I, the, my workloads are, uh, and uh, here's what I'd like to see that uniquely drives uh, IO capabilities that meet and maximize my workload. So, we are applying both, uh, both core focus areas, one with uh, tier one OEM, OEMs in the MSP cloud, and then direct end customers in the web scale space. So, so I wonder if you could give us your, your CIO or CEO perspective on just objectives. So if you think of we were, we were at ServiceNow Knowledge a couple of weeks ago, Frank Slootman's company. I don't know yeah, if you yeah, passed yeah. cross with <laughs> Frank when he was here, but yeah. they're all about TAM expansion, right? The TAM is 20 billion, then it's 30 billion, then it's 40 billion, and people get all excited. A lot of CEOs worry about TAM expansion. Um, it seems like your objectives would be somewhat different. Execution, profitability, you know, maintaining and, and growing market share. Um, I wonder if you could put that into context for yeah. us. So how do you think about the market? Are you, you know, eager to, to find new markets and, and, and grow into new spaces? Or are you really trying to focus on executing on you know, your main market? Great question, and the answer is we want to do both. Uh, first is our core business has got about a 1.6 billion dollar TAM. Yeah. When you look at fiber channel and ethernet connectivity. And we want to be number one or number two. We are number one in the fiber channel space and we are already a number two, strong number two with Intel as, as number one in the ethernet space, yeah. <laughs> right? So uh, that's just core connectivity. And we are building a whole level of adjacency next to it by going up the IO stack and back to Stu's point, software is the key for us. And so we are leveraging higher order software IO capabilities that add new value uh, and expand our TAM. So today, uh, our share of, mar share of available market is roughly 1.2 to 1.6, and our goal is to get to what, a $7 billion addressable TAM. And uh, I don't want to steal the thunder of what's coming on the analyst day. Uh, by the way, we're doing an analyst day on the 15th of May in that NASDAQ, and I'm going to talk about uh, our phase two agenda of revenue expansion with an addressable SAM of $7 billion, uh, and uh, how we go about doing it. Well, the street's been excited about QLogic this year. I mean, the story's resonating, and you haven't even told the full story yet, so. Yeah, QLogic 2.0. 
right? <laughs> that's, that's the buzzword, uh, or that's the tagline. Uh, and in a nutshell, it's all about transforming from a rock solid IO connectivity player to an intelligent IO solutions player with software as the the, the blue crystals, if you will. All right, so Prasad, you, you, you lay out that Q2.0. For the, the, the industry watchers, people that you know, are, are keeping an eye on QLogic, what should we be looking for uh, you know, the, later this year? What can we say, you know, hey, are they executing uh, as they said, they're delivering what, what uh, you know, we expect to see? What, what should we look for the rest well, of 2015? Uh, besides uh, holding our own on, on market segment share, back to Dave's point on, on our core, core capabilities, uh, we want to be the first to announce uh, 2550 100 gigabit Ethernet controllers with full low latency fabric uh, protocol capabilities, uh, specifically RDMA uh, support on things like Rocky and iWarp, which are a big deal for scale out workloads, right? So watch for that. Uh, number two, uh, you're going to see us uh, partnering with some very key players who are a big presence in cloud markets. Uh, where we will be their preferred partner in go-to-market for these cloud environments. And, and uh, we're going to have intelligent software that will enable things like DDoS, uh, encryption, uh, mirroring, and so on, uh, that is enabled natively in the data path uh, by our connectivity cards with software uh, and providing these higher value add services uh, for overall system performance. And so that's a big deal for us. And, uh, just watch this space. All right, Prasad, we have to leave it there. Prasad Rampali, CEO of QLogic, guiding the company into new waters, tripling, more than tripling, uh, the opportunity from a TAM standpoint, steady hand at the wheel in the core markets. Thanks very much for coming to theCUBE, it's great to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. All right, pleasure. All right, All right keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. Right after this, this is theCUBE, we're live from EMC World 2015, and we'll be right back. <laughs>